a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today or pick up one of the Connections flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us also on Facebook. And join us in making Founders MCC your one-stop spiritual portal. This is your first Sunday at Founders. You are our guest. We would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center. And meet some new friends. We'd love to answer your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. Or a cup of tea. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out our welcome tablet. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you're joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website. And let us know that you're joining us. Founders MCC is a place of diverse and well, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Well, good morning, and as we gather for worship this morning, please join with me in the words of our call to worship, which are a leader and people response. We wait patiently for our God. We will experience God for ourselves. We will sing, we will sing the songs of the one in whom we can trust. We will tell of all that God has done for us. We will sing, we will sing the songs of the one whose salvation is for all. So let's sing this morning as we rise in body and spirit our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Today is Martin Luther King weekend, and so as we gather in worship this morning, we start with a litany and prayer based on Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's 1964 Nobel Prize for Peace and his acceptance speech. I refuse to accept despair as the final response to the ambiguities of history. I believe that there is still hope for a brighter tomorrow. I refuse to accept the idea that the illness of humanity's present nature marks us morally incapable of reaching up for the eternal oughtness that forever confronts us. I believe that what the self-centered have torn down, the other-centered can build up. I refuse to accept the idea that we are more floatsome and jetsam in the river of life, unable to influence the unfolding events which surround us. I have the audacity to believe 
The peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. I refuse to accept the view that humanity is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of isms that the bright daybreak of peace and equality can never become a reality. I still believe that one day we will bow before the altars of God and be crowned triumphant over hate and nonviolent redemptive goodwill proclaim the rule of this land. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. I believe that wounded justice can reign supreme. This is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. I will still believe we shall overcome. And with this faith, we can face the uncertainties of the future. May it give our tired feet new strength as we continue our forward stride toward the city of freedom, equality, and justice, where the lion and the lamb shall lie down together, and everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and none shall be afraid. I have a dream. May we allow that dream to be fulfilled in us this day as we celebrate and honor the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. I want to welcome you to worship as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning here in Southern California in Los Angeles. Uh, We know that that is not the case in many places around the country, and yet we uh, give God thanks for the way in which God continues to reveal, reveal God's self to us in this place this morning. Welcome to you. I want to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. Uh, We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are delighted that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you and welcome uh, you to worship this morning. Welcome to you. Please do accept this welcome envelope as our way of acknowledging your presence inside. You'll find more information about our congregation. Uh, Also, ways in which you can be connected with us as a church. We believe that uh, church is not just about filling a pew on a Sunday morning, uh, but church is about building community one with the other. And so we affirm that oneness, we affirm the God who is present, and we affirm together that we are building community of those who are called to follow in the likeness of Christ, not in the dogmas of the church, but in the values that Christ came to teach to us. So welcome to you as we gather in worship. Thank you for taking a moment to turn your cell phones off and to move them into the silent position. Uh, That will give us uh, an uninterrupted hour. We are just uh, glad that you are here. We also want to welcome all those who are worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, We have a number of folks from around the world who gather with us on a Sunday morning uh, and throughout the week, and so we are glad that you are with us this morning. Our ushers are passing out the welcome tablets in our church, and online we invite you to uh, sign in for us on the homepage. You'll find a little box that you can just click right at this very moment. Uh, Please do sign in. Let us know that you've been present. Uh, We also have a number of ways in which we can reach out in care for one another. And so if you're in need of pastoral care, uh, please do not hesitate to speak to any one of us who serve on the dais this morning or indeed with our Minister of Congregational Care, Reverend Melissa Smithy. Uh, She'll be delighted to make an appointment with you. And for those of you who are online, if you are also in need of uh, uh, ministry and of uh, care, uh, please know that we do have eye care hours and you can email Reverend Melissa at revmelissa at mccla.com and she'll be delighted to set up an appointment with you as well. We're a church that truly believes that building community is the most important thing that we can do as we care for one another in this world and beyond. So welcome to you. As your ushers came in, they would have given you orders of worship, and on the front you'll find the order of today's service. Uh, Inside you'll find all of the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. 
Uh, we say this every time, but we are indeed a very busy congregation, so we don't want you to miss out on anything. Uh, so please do avail yourself of all of the announcements that are in the bulletin. Uh, check our website at mccla.org for the latest information. And please do sign up and sign in on Facebook. Uh, let your friends know that you have been in worship this morning. It's one of those wonderful ways in which we can reach out and let people know about the beauty of the place that you are at this morning. So as we gather one with the other, we affirm that God is good. And all the time, God is good. So let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, as we affirm that goodness in our bodies. Welcome to you. Before we get to the, uh, the word this morning, uh, you may be seated, sorry. Uh, we'll get you to stand up again in just a few moments, but uh, be seated for a second. Uh, before we get to the scripture reading this morning, uh, we have a very special thing to do in our congregation. Um, as you know, uh, about a year ago now, or maybe more, uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was removed from the uh, legislation of our, our, our country, and uh, now uh, LGBT people are able to serve openly in the military and in the forces. Um, I've said this before, and I'll just say it one more time. I truly believe that marriage equality in this country uh, won't necessarily come quickly through the legislation, uh, but I do believe it's going to come very quickly through our military resources. Um, and so we are so grateful uh, for the way in which our military are reaching out uh, and reminding us that uh, equality is needed throughout the federal government. Um, and I say that because many of the LGBT couples who are now married and who are living um, in military places where, which are federally owned um, in states where the state don't recognize marriage equality, um, as soon as a couple leave the base, if they're in that state where they're not legally married, they're no longer re recognized as a legally married couple. And uh, uh, one of the great things that I know that the many of the military forces are working on is recognizing that that's an inequality. Um, and so uh, I think that uh, marriage equality for our, our country is going to come through the military. Who would have known that uh, just a few years ago? Uh, but uh, as a congregation, we have been very supportive of our LGBT folks, especially those who are in active service. Uh, we truly believe that everyone should have the right to be in active service if they choose to do that. Um, not something I would necessarily choose, but, uh, uh, that, but I truly believe that equality means that you should have the right to serve uh, just like everybody else. And in our congregation, we have an active military service uh, ministry as one of our programs. And uh, we're delighted this morning to welcome uh, Chaplain Twedell and, of course, the head of our military ministry here in our congregation, Jonathan Carlisle. And today we're going to be signing um, a, a memorandum of understanding uh, between the Partners in Care Congregation and Founders Metropolitan Community Church and the, National, the California National Guard. Uh, which will mean that our congregation and our clergy uh, will be able to offer services uh, specifically to the military um, in our country and uh, certainly in our state. So I'm going to ask uh, Chaplain Trudell and uh, Jonathan Carlisle to come forward. I'm going to ask Jonathan to speak brief briefly, and uh, we're going to welcome them as they come forward this morning. Today is a very historical day. Mm -hmm. We that have served in the military um, and who have been gay or lesbian um, had to do it quietly without um, acknowledgement. And today is a day that now we can support those soldiers who are gay and bisexual and straight <laughs> openly through this program called Partners in Care. Partners in Care was established in 1995 in Maryland, and it's targeting uh, faith-based organizations uh, to be able to support in any services that they can provide to their soldiers. 
And this year launches in California through the California Army uh, Guard. So it's with great pleasure that um, Chaplain Twadell and us as a congregation starts that new journey together and be a support and servicing all the soldiers in the California Army National Guard. Well, good morning. It's truly an honor and a blessing to be here to worship with you this morning and to share and officially partner with MCCLA uh, with the California National Guard in this uh, truly a blessing to our service members, both Army and Air and the California National Guard. I have uh, two letters, um, both of which are on behalf of uh, Major General Baldwin and the California National Guard, and then how you can call me. <laughs> I mean, I get your cell phone number? Is that the uh, Actually, I think my I, It is, it's a cell phone that. number. <laughs> Oh, and, and, and that, that's my leash. I go nowhere without it. So <laughs> We get called upon a lot. Uh, but again, uh, on behalf of uh, Governor Brown, uh, Major General Baldwin, the Adjutant General, and our state chaplain, Chaplain Clare, thank you for partnering with us uh, in this great and blessed ministry to our service member and service uh, and their families, and especially for our, our gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender uh, service members that are there. You'll be happy to know we're actually performing our first uh, uh, marriage in about three months. And apparently it's going to hit the news, but uh, uh, it'll, it's really exciting to see this happen. So the military is making those changes. California is one of the states where this is, uh, uh, is absolutely legal. And uh, so it's, it's a real delight to see California leading the way in this area. I just have to get a couple of signatures here, one mine and one from the congregation to make this legal. <laughs> so if you would sign right there. It's like being married. <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> my, my spouse wasn't too sure about this. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, actually, you all are married in the National Guard. <laughs> so this is the official copy. We will sign another copy at 1100, so mm -hmm. I'll hang on to this one, and then you have another copy, right? I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Scripture reading, John 1, verse 29 through 42. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, The one who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. <clears throat> the next day, John was there again with two of his dis disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. 
So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and, and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. you to be seated and if you would join with me in a moment of prayer as we prepare to respond to God's word for us this morning. Let us pray. Loving and gracious and holy one, you who we call God and you who come to us as beloved, thank you for this time that we get to spend together, a time that we invest ourselves in developing our own spirituality, our own connection with you. Thank you for this community in which we get to share and to do ministry one with the other. And thank you that ultimately you continue to reveal your love to us as we live out the values of Jesus in this world. So bless us now as we open our hearts and minds to hear you, to receive you, to acknowledge you, to enable your word to bless us so that that might be a blessing to the world. Still our hearts open our minds, therefore, so that we might receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit that you have for us this day. And now, loving and gracious one, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray, amen. So over the last few weeks, we've been following Jesus on his journey uh, since the Christmas story. And over the last few weeks, we've celebrated his baptism. We've celebrated uh, the epiphany, the time when the revelation of who Jesus uh, was and who he's come to be was given to us. And this morning, uh, we continue the journey with Jesus as the fullness of his identity and the fullness of his reality is being revealed slowly but surely. In the scripture reading this morning, we heard about how Jesus was not only acknowledged by John, uh, but how some of the other disciples, some of those other followers began to understand that this Jesus that they'd been hanging around with for a little while uh, was more than just Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, that suddenly this journey was revealing to them that this was Jesus the Messiah. Uh, this was Jesus the Christ. This was the, the one that they had been waiting for for all this time. And the evidence of who he was was being revealed more and more and more. So much so that ultimately we would know that in following Jesus, there was this whole multitude that would follow him time after time after time after time. That the fullness, the proof was in the pudding of his life. Jesus was being revealed and Jesus was coming to the fullness of his reality and this Jesus, as we know, not only lived for those first 30 years just as Jesus of Nazareth, but in these last three years would live out his life in the fullness of the miracle of his life. The journey continues for Jesus. 
And this journey that we get to share in is a journey that didn't end with his death and resurrection. This journey is a journey that continues through each and every one of us as we embody Christ in the world. That's why we say so often in this place that there is no body but, je- but yours in the world today that we really truly represent Jesus in the world, that we are the embodiment of the Christ, and that as such our bodies are important to this world, that each and every one of us lives with a purpose, that each and every one of us is called by our names, and that not one of us is left out of the equation. Now I understand that many of us have been told that we get left out of the equation, but in this church we understand that there is no one that is left out of the equation of being the fullness of the body of Christ in the world. And that each and every one of us has a purpose. Each and every one of us has a name. Each and every one of us is worthy. Each and every one of us is loved. Each and every one of us comes to the fullness of our reality if we could truly be in the journey with Jesus. If we could truly embody the presence of Christ in the world today. You know, last night there was a a gathering in our church for one of our members who has just celebrated her 50th birthday. And she had decided that she wanted to celebrate her birthday in a very different way than many of us. She wanted a birthday party that included a worship service. Now, I understand that's not what all of us want to do, but she had decided that that's how she wanted to celebrate. And she had brought together a group of people, her friends and her family, uh, from all over the country. And they traveled to Los Angeles, and they were here last night for a a gathering of her 50th. Now, it wasn't just a, a worship service. Uh, They did have a party afterwards. Uh, But she decided that she wanted to have her family with her, celebrating her birthday and to make this a very spiritual moment for her. And last night, as we gathered in this congregation, as we gathered in this church, uh, some of us were able to participate in that. And she had said to me, she said, I want you to celebrate communion with my friends and with my family. I told you it's a very different birthday party. But she had decided that her journey had brought her in such a place in revelation about who she was that it brought her to this place in her life that it was just absolutely imperative that she had a worship celebration, that she was able to celebrate communion with her friends and family as a part of her 50th year and her 50th birthday. I want to tell you, it was an extraordinary experience. There were folks in this congregation who have not been in church for a long time. There were folks in this congregation that came from different perspectives and came from different traditions, but they gathered in this place last night. And I always say that in this congregation, we get to reveal the journey of who Jesus is in so many different ways. And as we gathered in this place and as we celebrated communion, her family and her friends just flooded to this altar to receive communion with her. We understood and she understood and they understood that this table of liberation that we get to share every Sunday morning was suddenly a table that was available to them. And I know that their lives were changed last night because the journey for her and the journey for them continues through the presence of Christ in their lives. I want to give thanks to uh, those in our congregation who went out of their way to make sure that Lisa had a great celebration and a great birthday. And thank you to each and every one of you who were able to be a part of that last night. You, you see, the journey is not just a journey for Jesus. The journey is a journey that you and I are also embarked upon. And the journey is a journey that continues to reveal itself as we allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill our lives. You know, the old saying that says a leopard never changes its spots is just not true when you live in the presence of Jesus. That the real news, the real good news is that our journey continues. The revelation of who we are and the revelation of who we are becoming continues to be real as we allow that spirit to embody us. And that whilst we may have been this person a few days ago, we are a different person today because we have surrendered ourselves to the presence of the holy. You see, that's what they were realizing about Jesus. This Jesus, too, was being revealed to them over and over again in new ways. There was not a day that go by that they didn't see something new about Jesus. There wasn't a day that went by that they didn't suddenly realize or sometimes come to the self-body realization that this Jesus meant more than they ever knew. And just like you and I, as we embody Christ in our lives today, so the lives of who we are are being revealed one after the other. Who can tell me that there is not a person in this room this morning that they acknowledge is not the same that they were yesterday that they are today? 
that we are truly, if we are really on this pilgrim path, that we must be a changing people. We must be a people who are drawing closer to the reality of who Jesus is and allowing that Jesus to embody us in new and passionate and loving and gracious ways. Who would have known that just a year ago we would have had Chaplain Twadell here this morning to welcome us as a congregation and partner in community with the military of the United States of America. I'm sure that there were many who would never have thought that this day would have come. But as we continue in our pilgrim path, as we continue to live out the equality and the good news of Jesus, miracles continue to happen, not just for us as a church, but for us as individuals. Many of us look back in our own existence and see where our journey has brought us to this day. And to this day, we get a new and fresh understanding of who we are and of who we are becoming. Many of us have come with heartache. Many of us have come with damage from the past. Many of us have come with that victim mentality. But this morning we come to an understanding that we are whole people created in the image and likeness of a God who is with us. Not a God who is divorced from us, but a God who is very present. That's what the disciples were witnessing about Jesus. They began to witness that the God that they had heard of, the God that they understood, the God that they had worshipped was no longer a God who was up here, but who was embodied in Jesus, embodied in the very fabric of His body. And those of us who choose to follow Jesus too must understand that the very presence of God is within us, that the very presence of the Holy Spirit is within us and liberates us and calls us ever forward into the likeness of Christ, into the likeness of His body this morning, so that the miracle of the story of Jesus is not just something that died out with Him, or died out with those last apostles and disciples that followed Him for those years, but is with us today, truly embodied in who we are becoming, because God has not finished with any one of us yet. Our leopards continue to change their spots as we grow in likeness to the presence of Christ. That's the good news that we get to receive this morning. That's the good news that we get to offer to the world. That's the good news that we celebrate as our journey continues. We are still a work in progress. Who says, thank God for that? I'm grateful that I'm still a work in progress. I'm grateful that there is still much for me to learn. I'm grateful that there is still much for me to do, that there is still much for me to learn and to understand about who I am. Because not one of us can truly come to that moment until perhaps we land ourselves in that place that we call heaven. That day by day, moment by moment, second by second, we surrender ourselves to this great power that we call God the God of our understanding, the higher power that perhaps we are still trying to understand is with us this morning. And not just with us, but in us. Building us up, allowing us to create, allowing us to be, creating a new vision for this world. It's that embodiment that we see in Dr. Martin Luther King. It's that embodiment that we see in Nelson Mandela. It's that embodiment that we see in Mother Teresa. It's that embodiment that I believe that we're beginning to see in Pope Francis. It's that embodiment that we are seeing coming to life, coming to reconcile, coming to this world, but not just in those figures that get media attention. It also comes to you and me, just as we are. So this morning, I encourage us not to give up on ourselves, not to allow the pressures of the world to distract us from our journey, but to continue our journey step by step, moment by moment, surrendering ourselves to this journey just as Jesus had to surrender himself to become the fullness of the Christ that we come to welcome this morning. That each and every one of us, 
Not one of us excluded, each and every one of us on our journey can find the wholeness that we hope for and that we pray for. So this morning in our congregation, as we welcome this Christ, as we acknowledge this Christ, it is no longer a Christ who is out there. It is a Christ that's in you. It's a Christ that's embodied in you. It's a Christ that transforms our lives and enables us to touch the world gently and to allow people to find their place in this world. In this words, we, year we are talking about how we are being transformed ourselves in order that we might transform the world. As we begin this new year, be transformed. Be transformed into the very likeness of who Christ is. Begin with you, so that through you, the world might find this Jesus that we speak of. Not the dogmas of a church, not the theology of a pastor, but the expression of Christ who looks into the world through the eyes of Mark, who looks at the world through the eyes of Gail, who looks at the world through the eyes of Aaron, who looks at the world through your eyes just as it looked through the world through Jesus' eyes and comes to us in this very moment and says, the journey is within you. Now let's go into the world and make it real. Because if we just allow it to stop here, it has no effect. But just like Jesus, if we go back out into the world and live it, then the world is transformed through you. May you be blessed by this word, encouraged by this word, affirmed by this word, loved by this word, for you truly are. In the name of the one who created it, the God who is present. And may the people of God, well, they say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we are so thankful for the revelation of the journey that continues. We thank you for the way in which those early peoples were able to see you emerging as the Messiah and the Christ. They perhaps didn't acknowledge that when you were a baby or as you were growing up and as you were 12 in the temple and the mom and dad came running to find you because you'd been left behind to speak to the synagogue leaders. They perhaps didn't realize who you were even as you approached John the baptizer and you said to John, no, I must be baptized by you. Perhaps they didn't even see the fullness when the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended upon you and you heard the voice from heaven say, this is my child with whom I'm well pleased. Perhaps they didn't get fullness of the grasp of who you are even when John was testifying as was in Scripture this morning and said, this is the one, this is the one. And yet step by step as he just lived out his life, they came to the fullness of the understanding of who he was. May we live our lives in such a way that the fullness of who we are becomes real not only to us, but to those around us. And may we never give up on living the dream, the dream where all are free, including ourselves. Now may God add to this word what needs to be added, take away what needs to be taken away, but leave us with that central message, O oh God, of who you are to us, so that in our transformation, we might transform the world. In the honor and glory of the one who created the world and who is in the world this day through Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Good morning. You know, I was um, not going to do the offering today, but uh, <laughs> because I had oral surgery on Thursday. And um, I was sitting listening to Reverend Neal's sermon, and it kind of came to me what, it, what I needed to talk about today. Um, forgive my lisp. <laughs> I'm still a little swollen, so bear with me. Um, 2012 was one of the hardest years of my life. It was a year where I lost everything. I lost my relationship, 10 and a half year relationship, my home, custody of my kids, my church home, everything. I was spiritually and emotionally bankrupt. Then I started attending this church. And I had been asked several times by Patrice um, to come here. And, you know, I put it off and I put it off and I put it off because I was in such going on uh, turmoil, I guess is the best way to put it. And so I finally relented, I guess you could say, and came to church. And I've been coming here ever since. Um, since I came here, I was accepted. And I've been nurtured ever since. Had I not come here... I know for a fact that I wouldn't be alive today. I say this because without your financial support, we wouldn't be here right now. So please give as you are able. Thank you for these gifts that you have given us. May they be used to further your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. seated. Let's prepare our hearts through prayer. The ultimate measure of, of humankind, according to Martin Luther King Jr., is not where we stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where we stand in times of challenge and controversy. So God, we pray, give us courage to be counted among those who will work for justice. In 1963, in his challenging letter to complacent white clergy in the South, Dr. King wrote, we will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the vitriolic words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. In the end, he said, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. 
O God, we pray, transform our stillness into action and our fear into courage. Inspired by the nonviolent teachings of Jesus, Thoreau and Gandhi, King taught that nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon because it cuts without wounding and ennobles the one who wields it. Nonviolence is a sword that heals. Yes. God, we pray, heal this nation through the work of our hands. In 1964, in accepting the Nobel Peace Prize, he said that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. Right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. O oh God, we pray, may we always trust in the strength of your goodness. In 1967, King wrote that in the wealthiest nation in the world, the solution to poverty is simply this. We must abolish it. O oh God, we pray, rearrange the priorities of peoples and nations so that all will receive an equal measure. And on the day before his death, Dr. King described his ministry succinctly. I just want to do God's will. O oh God, we pray, Rise up prophets among us who will lead us in your ways, even as we pray the prayer of Jesus. that God wants to hear our prayers and to forgive us. For God is willing to lean close to our hearts and listen to our failures, our poor choices, all the things that we have done wrong, those things we're not too proud of. So in silence, I ask to let us offer our sincere hearts as God patiently hears us. Together, may we join in our prayer of confession. There, there is none, none like you, Redeemer, Redeemer of, of all your children. children. You lean over to listen to our prayers 
and whisper forgiveness to our souls. You lift us out of the holes we dig for ourselves and set us on hope's solid ground. You strengthen our weakness with life, grace, and love, Jesus Christ, our Savior. So come, dear friends, and receive God's grace. Mm -hmm. See all that God is doing for you. Follow Jesus as we are led closer to God. We will sing of God's love for all. We will sing a new song of hope and wonder. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 The God of patience is with you. And also with you. Offer your hearts to the one who waits for you. We open them to God, who is our life. Come and sing new songs to our God. To to g- we will give praise to one who dwells in our hearts. Together with all around us, with those in every place and from every time, we will sing our songs to you. For on that night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he took bread from the table, the matzah, the simple bread, and he raised it to his Abba, and he asked blessings upon it, and he broke it, and he shared it to all. Here, this is my body, which is broken for you. I ask simply that you eat of this meal, and you eat of it often, and when you do so, Remember me. In a similar way, he took the cup. He again asked blessings upon it and passed it to those who were gathered there as it is passed to you and to me this day. Here, take and drink of this cup. This is the new covenant filled forth with my blood, my life essence, all of who I am. Drink it and have new life. Here your children are gathered, where the gifts of the table are offered for all. Here you bring us together from every place on earth, where the Spirit transforms simple gifts into sacred us. Mm -hmm. Here, where the bread is broken, we are strengthened to go and bring the good news to all. Here, where salvation is poured out, we are called into fellowship with those despised by the world, Mm -hmm. with those who live in the shadows, with those who long for someone to listen to their pain. And when you have brought all time to an end, when you gather your children home, seating us around the great feast of the Lamb, we will sing that new song of praise to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. And amen. My friends, this table is not prepared by us, but prepared by God. And it is a table that is offered to each and every one of us. For here at Founders MCC, along with MCCs all over the world, we offer and we celebrate an open communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or of any church to come forward to partake of this meal. This is a feast of love that is provided for us all. In a moment, the ushers will guide you forward to stations in the front. It's our tradition here to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, and place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself. And then we offer a short prayer of blessing with you and for you. And if you'd like to come forward and participate in this meal of liberation this morning, but just between you and God, there'll be a station of consecrated elements to your right to which you might go at any time. 
and take part in this meal. Whether you come forward or whether you stay where you're at, this is a time to commune with, to be one with the God who loves you most. Give yourself the gift of allowing yourself to be in communion with God. Just be with God. And may it not only be during this time, but in all times of our lives. And for those who are part of our family and community online who are worshiping with us at home, you have friends together, family, or just yourself, this is the time for you to be intentional, to take the bread, whatever it is that you have, and to celebrate, to remember that God has given us a feast for all to receive. So friends, let's keep this meal with one another. May the servers and acolytes please come forward and may we indeed follow the directions of our ushers. <clears throat>
Before we close worship in song this morning, I understand that there are other members of AVA with us this morning, veterans for equal rights, and so uh, we want to acknowledge you this morning. We're grateful that you chose to worship with us and thankful for your work and ministry uh, that led to this moment of history in this congregation. Would you give them a round of applause this morning? I believe that the ministry of Jesus is a ministry of justice, of equality, and of access to all peoples. And so our journey continues today, both as a church and as individuals. So may we find the fullness of that revelation as we live out the values that we see espoused in Jesus and now given to us to choose to live by today. Let's rise then in body and spirit as we close worship in song. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given and the blessing of God known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in.
thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 